In this video, I'd like to show you how I use Tilix, a terminal multiplexer that you can use in Linux. And if you look behind me, you can see that I have Tilix running right now. And you can see that it has multiple terminals open at the same time. So I'm going to show you how to install it and how to configure it and work with it. Now, there are plenty of terminal multiplexers out there. GNU Screen, otherwise just known as Screen, is very popular. Gwake, Biobu, Terminator, and many others, including one that I use a lot, which is called Tmux. But I use Tmux more on servers, and I'll show that in a separate video altogether. But on my desktop, the one that I use the most often is Tilix. That's my favorite, and it works the best for me. So let's go ahead and show how to install Tilix, and I'm gonna do this in a virtual machine. I have a Debian 11 client virtual machine opened here. And so we're gonna do a fresh installation of this, and I'm gonna open up the GNOME terminal. And the GNOME terminal is great, I use it all the time, but it only allows you to work with tabs and not multiplexing as of the recording of this video in the year 2022. So we can't do multiplexing right now. If that gets included in the future, that would be awesome. But right now my tool is Tilix. So I want to install this. So on Debian, we'll do a sudo apt install Tilix. That's it. If you're on Fedora, that'll be a DNF install Tilix. And if you're on Arch, that'll be a Pac-Man dash capital S Tilix. But again, we're on Debian here. So we'll do a sudo apt install Tilix, type in my password. That's it, pretty quick. Not a huge program, small footprint as Linux programs should be. To open it, we just run the Tilix command and press enter. And there we go. But chances are, I don't want to open this from the GNOME terminal all the time. What I normally do is I use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to close this out right now and go to my settings and go over to keyboard shortcuts. And we'll scroll down here and click the plus sign to create a new shortcut. And you can see I already have a shortcut to the GNOME terminal, which is Control-Alt-T. But I'm going to make a new one called Tilix. The command is Tilix. And we'll set the shortcut to, well, Control-Alt-T would be nice, but I'm just going to do Control-Alt-I and add that in. Okay, so now that's added in as a shortcut. Go back here, and if we press Control-Alt-I, that opens up the Tilex program. So I always use keyboard shortcuts whenever possible. Uh, you may or may not like the white background with this green. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change the profile and yes, we're gonna go to a dark mode. So we'll click here, go to profiles, go to edit profile. I want to make some additional profiles. So I'm gonna click here, clone the current one, and we'll rename this one, we'll call it dark. And you know what else? We'll uh, use that for all new terminals. We'll make that the default. Go over to color here and change the color scheme. And let's choose Monokai dark. There we go. All right, close this out. Exit out of here. Exit out of this, we don't need that anymore. And close this. I'll press Control Alt I again, and there we go. We have Tilex running in Monokai dark mode. Bring this up, make it a little bigger. Fantastic. But how do we get from this to this? How are we going to do it? Well, we got some work to do. So, first, we have to ask what is terminal multiplexing? It's when you run two or more terminal login sessions from the same terminal emulator program. And the program does this by splitting the terminal vertically or horizontally. That's known as multiplexing. 
With a program like this, you can also detach and reattach individual login sessions. And these sessions might be called windows or tiles or simply terminals. It's really whatever you prefer. I'll be referring to the individual sections as terminals. So let's show how terminal multiplexing works in Tilex now. To split the screen, we can simply right click and we can select either a vertical or a horizontal split here. So if we clicked on this, we'd get a vertical split and now we have two terminals running. To close out of this, we can just press control D or type exit and that'll bring us back to our original terminal. And of course, you're gonna want a keyboard shortcut for this. To do a vertical split in Tilex, it's Control-Alt-R. Now I call this a vertical split or a left-right split. And this is because there's this vertical line down the center of the screen. Also because we're sectioning through the short axis. If we were to look at the side, and the dimensions here, that would be the short axis or the shorter dimension of the screen, which for me is 1080 pixels. Now let me close out of that second terminal. Let's say we wanted to split it horizontally. We could right click and select this other icon that's more in landscape mode or press Control Alt D and that'll split it horizontally. Quite often what I'll do is I'll do a three-way split. So I'll do a control alt R for a left, right split. And now do a control alt D for an up down split over there. And now we can have these three terminals running at the same time. And so we could have different programs running in different terminals here. For example, the top program running here, one of the other terminals, we could run a ping command or whatever it is that you need to do within your system. So we can have these different terminals running different things at the same time with their own separate histories of commands. So that's a basic example of how to multiplex in Tilex. I'll use it to run servers in one terminal, code in another, configurations in another, and so on. And so the possibilities are really endless with this. Let's show a little more functionality of Tilex now. First, I've been clicking on the different terminals to access them just using the mouse, but I don't like to use the mouse whenever I don't have to. I'd rather use the keyboard if at all possible. So first of all, you can navigate between the terminals and right now I'm in this upper right one, but you can navigate between them using the alt key and the arrow key. So I can use alt arrow to the left and that brings us to this terminal here or alt right back to that terminal on the right, alt and the down arrow key brings us to the, the bottom terminal on the right. You could also use alt and the number of the terminal. So alt one would bring us to that first terminal. You can adjust the size of the terminals as you see fit. You could do that with the mouse by clicking and dragging right over the dimensions here. But you can also do this with the keyboard and you would do that with alt shift arrow. So let's say I wanted this terminal to be bigger. I would do an alt shift and I'm doing a down arrow right now to increase the size of that. Alt left to go to the terminal on the left and then alt shift and the right arrow to make that one bigger. Now let's say I'm running a program like top and there's just too much information and my font size is too big and I can't see everything. Well. Sometimes you want to take that terminal and go full screen. You could do that with control shift X and then you'll get the full screen version for that terminal. And that's a toggle. If you want to go back, control shift X again. You can also detach and reattach terminals. So for example, I could take this terminal and click and drag right on its title bar and move that somewhere else, perhaps over here. And we can move it back just by clicking and dragging it down here, back to where it was. You can even move them to different windows and different screens. So detaching and reattaching a terminal can be super powerful as well. Take a look at some of the shortcut keys that we covered so far. To do a vertical split, the shortcut key is Control plus Alt plus R. 
a horizontal split, control alt D. Navigating between the terminals, alt plus arrow or alt plus the number of the terminal. Adjust the size of the terminal with alt shift arrow and go full screen with control plus shift plus X. So that's the basics of Tilex. If you were just looking to find out how to install it and use it, there you go. But there's much more to it, and that's kind of the purpose of this video, is to show a little bit more and take it to the next level. So let's do that now. Tilex also supports custom profiles, transparencies, persistent layouts, internal workspaces, and notifications. So a lot of cool stuff here, especially persistent layouts is something that's attractive to me, meaning you can save your configuration. And that's the key here. We want to have our configuration all set up and then be able to access it again later on. So those are persistent layouts. So let me show you some more customization I do in Tilex. I'm going to go back to our virtual machine here. So the first thing is to create additional profiles. We already created one and that was called dark, but let's go ahead and create another one. We'll go to profiles again and go to edit profiles and we'll select clone for dark and we'll rename this when we're done with it. But I'm going to choose a different color scheme for this one so I can tell the difference between the terminal windows a little bit better. Uh, for example, let's do material for this one and we'll change the name to material, close out of here, and then we'll actually select that profile. There we go. A little bit of a different look there. And we can do that again for this. There we go. So now we have a different look for each of our terminals and that can make things a lot easier on the eyes and help you to differentiate between the different work that you're doing. And if you wanted to, you could also have transparency, which is pretty cool. If we go to edit the profile again, this time we'll edit the twilight profile, go to color and select transparency here and start making it transparent. You can see it's already transparent down here. Maybe I'll do like this much, which is a cool little feature. Transparency in there, which is not built into the GNOME terminal on Debian by default. So a little extra bonus. And I'm actually going to go and now save this entire layout. Remember, we said we had persistent layouts, so I'm going to go and save that now. We'll go to Save As. It's a good idea to save these things into your home directory and save these types of configuration files as hidden files. So I'm gonna call this a dot Tilex and we'll call it dash workspace one. The dot means that it will be hidden. So Tilex dash workspace one, we'll click save and let's close out of here. And this time I'll just open a regular GNOME terminal and let's take a look at that file that we just saved. We'll run an ls-la and look for it. Here it is. It's called .tilex-workspace1.json. So we know that this is a JSON format. And we can open this Tilex program with this specific layout that's saved in this workspace file. We can do that by running the Tilex command with dash S and then the name. And I'll just use auto completion for that. Press enter. And that opens us up to exactly the same layout we had, the different profiles here and the three separate terminals. So we've saved this configuration and we can open it from the terminal, but it makes more sense to set the keyboard shortcut for it. So let's go back to our keyboard shortcuts here and we'll add a new one. And this one I'll call Tilex layout. And the command for this would be Tilex. And then to specify a layout, we'll use dash S and the name of the file dot Tilex dash workspace one dot JSON. I only have to set a shortcut, of course. I'm going to choose control alt Z. There we go. Now we'll press control alt Z. And that brings up 
the Tilex program with our persistent layout. But we can go further than that. Let's say we wanted each of the terminals to open into different directories. We could modify that within the JSON file that was produced for us. Let's take a look at that JSON file now. If we do a vim on the file that was created here, that we saved actually, our persistent layout file, and take a look at that, and I'll go full screen for a moment, you'll see how everything is laid out. The way that it works is you have different child sections for each terminal. So let me bring back the other terminals. Child one is the main terminal that we're working in and that we created and that we're working in right now. Then we have the other half of the screen, which is known as child two, that original vertical split that we did. Then that is broken up into two horizontal terminals, which are known as child one and child two within child two. So a little confusing, but that's the breakdown for it. And you can tell the difference because this one goes the entire height of the screen, 989 pixels. These two are split, 494 pixels each. So let's say we wanted to change the directories that opened up here. We could go to the directory option and make the modifications that we want. I seem to remember that Tilex likes uh, absolute paths. So let's do just that. I'm gonna press I for insert mode and we'll do something like this, slash home, slash user, slash downloads for this particular terminal. And maybe I want this terminal to open up into documents. So we could do that, slash home, slash user, slash documents. Check that, looks okay. We'll escape out, colon WQ to save and quit. Press enter, and let's close this. And then we'll press control alt Z to open it back up. And there we go. This terminal opened up to downloads and this terminal opened to documents. So it's good to know how to work with and modify JSON files, yet another example. Now you can only split your screen so many times, so Tilex also has the ability to create additional sessions. We can create additional workspaces or sessions here. And we can do that by clicking here on the plus sign for create a new session. And we'll click the plus sign now that opens up a new page, a new window, so to speak. And you can switch between them just by clicking here. You can select the different ones that you want, or you can use control page up and page down to switch between those. So let's say here, I just wanted a horizontal split. I'll do a control alt D, that is good. And then we could save this as a separate persistent layout. So we'll go to save as, and I'm gonna call this one dot Tilex dash workspace, but I'm gonna call it workspace two. Save that. Okay, and if I want both of these to come up when I open Tilex, I can make that modification too by changing the keyboard shortcut. I'll go to my Tilex layout shortcut and just add on the additional session that we want. I believe we have to do another dash S and then name that second session. Let's see if we're right here. Close out of this. Control Alt Z. There we go. And it opened up both. And so again, control page up, page down to switch between those various windows, those separate layouts, or you can click here or you can press the F12 key to bring up that side screen and change between them with the arrows if you wish. Let's take a look at the shortcut keys so far. These are the shortcut keys we did already, but to view your various windows that you have open, press F12. To change between the windows, control page up and control page down. Also control alt and the number of the window, if you wish, if you have a lot of windows, maybe that's something you want to do. So it's pretty powerful, right? But wait, there's more. Tilex also supports quake mode. 
Quake Mode is super awesome. If you're not familiar with Quake Mode, Quake Mode is something where the application runs on top of your other applications. And usually it fills up maybe one third or two thirds of the screen. So it's a really good thing to have. And it works well when you're using it with a keyboard shortcut of its own. And I'll open up the regular old GNOME terminal and try running Tilex with Quake Mode with dash Q. There we go. So this is nice because it runs on top of everything, but the real power of Quake Mode is the ability to make it disappear and reappear as you see fit. And normally I control this with a keyboard shortcut. So let's go back. I'm actually gonna close it for now. I just did that with an Alt F4, but let's go to our keyboard shortcuts again and just show this. Add that on. And now let's bring that up with a control alt Q and it shows that on the top of our screen here. So I could run whatever commands I need to do, connect to whatever I need to connect to. And then if I want it to disappear, so to speak, press control alt Q and it's gone. If I press the super key, you won't see it here. You'd have to find it as a process or press control alt Q again to bring it back up. So that's the beauty of Quake Mode. We can easily add that to our layout just by adding a dash Q. So that's up to you if you wanna do that. So Quake Mode, pretty awesome. Now, if you're not familiar with how Quake Mode came about, uh, it's the idea of running your console or your terminal, in this case, over the other apps. And it originally, came about from the original Quake 1 game and other games out there where they wanted the ability to be able to type commands in the console quickly while in gameplay, as you can see here. And so, definitely some good old school stuff. Showing my age here. And here's uh, some of the proof. <laughs> Used to be a gamer back in the day, but not so much now. And so one other thing I wanna show is that you can add a password to the program if you want. We can click on one of our links here, go to assistance, go to password, and you can set that up if you wish. Another quick note, let's not confuse a terminal multiplexer like Tilex with a tiling window manager or a TWN. The two are gonna be different. So let me just show a quick example of that because I get this question a bunch. And here's another virtual machine that I have here. I'm gonna connect as user, but I'm gonna connect here with DWM, which is a tiling window manager and log in. With a tiling window manager, the whole desktop is tiled, not just the terminal emulator. So now we do everything as tiles, including browsers and any other applications that we're running. So for example, I could do an Alt-P in this and search for Firefox, and that'll bring that up. Takes up the whole screen right now. Another Alt-P to search for, I don't know, a terminal. That brings up a terminal and it automatically splits the screen for us. And it'll keep doing that for everything that we run. Uh, Alt-J will switch between the different stuff here. Alt-J to go back here and type whatever we have to type. Alt M to go to full screen. And those are just the shortcut keys for DWM. But this is a little bit different. Remember that this is a tiling window manager where everything becomes tiled. And in fact, DWM is the desktop. But what we're showing in this video really is just Tilex, which is only tiling the terminal emulator. And that's just a part of the entire desktop. In this case, it's GNOME. Okay, this is the main page for Tilex. So you can check that out and that'll be in the notes for this video. Uh, also, here is the GitHub page for that. And you can see the uh, last edition was made 11 days ago. 5,000 stars. Uh, I believe the main author is not maintaining it anymore, but there are a lot of contributors. So I'm I'm definitely okay with using this program over the long term until something else comes along, but uh, right now it's definitely the tool for me.
And there's your shortcut keys again, real quick. And so that's it. That's it for Tylex. Definitely check it out. Give it a try. I hope this video was helpful to you and it provided some insight and hopefully gives you some encouragement in the world of computers and beyond. Okay, so go ahead and build on my work now and thank you for watching.